Hey everyone, my name is Matt, welcome to Aspect LED. Today we're going to be installing some LED in-ground lights at a local house. So come along and we'll show you how it's done. And so we've got our friend Edgar here today from the tech team at Aspect LED. And so Edgar, tell us what sort of products are we working with today on this install? Sure, today we're going to be installing five of our medium in-ground lights in warm white. We've also got a 200 watt power supply and we're going to be using some of our RTV silicone for the install. Fantastic. Well, let's jump into the installation. Before you start your landscape lighting project, it's essential to consider the goals of your project and what sort of lights and tools and plan you'll need to make sure you accomplish it. Ask yourself these simple questions. About the light, how bright do you want the lights to be? About the subject, what do you want to actually be lighting up? About the color, do you want it to be single color or have multicolor options? About the on and off function, do you want this to simply be a light that turns on and turns off or one that is dimmable or set to a timer? And ask yourself about powering the light. What type of power supply and controller situation are we talking about here? What size does your power supply need to be? And do you have an existing power supply that you can add on to? For this project, we want to light up some smaller bushes and trees. We don't have an existing system of lights set up that have their existing power supply, so we're going to have to start from scratch. We also don't need dimming capabilities on our light system, just a simple on-off works for us. No need to worry about a timer with our particular installation. As a part of that, we're going to be starting off fresh here. And one thing you'll want to keep in mind is when starting a project fresh like this, you especially need to plan it out thoroughly using a map or diagram of some sort to plot out the locations of your lights and where the wiring will end up going. We're going to use 3000K warm white light on our particular installation to give it that nice warm ambient glow at night while still being clean. With this setup, we still want the lights to be bright enough to show up in the evening and illuminate before the sun goes down completely. So the variant that we are going with is the 3000K warm white light version of our medium in-ground lights, choosing the ultra-bright variant. Now moving on to planning and preparation. With any project, it's important to plan ahead. But one of the factors we have to consider with a project such as this is issues of drainage and water. These lights are ultimately not underwater lights. They're built to be water resistant, but if they remain submerged in water from continuous rain that doesn't have any place to redirect or flow to away from the lights, that can ultimately damage them or their wiring. As a result, placing lights in a place that is up on a higher level where water can then flow down through directed paths is the best option for this sort of project. We determined on our project that five lights were needed and used the power supply formula to determine that a 200 watt power supply will give us the correct amount of power. If you want to learn more about how to calculate using the power supply formula, be sure to check out our link above. It's best to try to keep the run lengths of wire as short as possible on projects like this to reduce the effects of voltage drop on your wiring. We have decided to go with a star topology map with our power supply and our wires to help reduce this effect and make our wiring as direct as possible. The advantages of using star topology versus daisy chaining are that with star topology, it's much easier to diagnose if any particular light is having a problem. You also don't have the same connection points to worry about getting moisture into, and you don't have to worry about having to pot the lights. Now into tools and materials. For this part, we have ordered five medium in-ground, warm white 3000K medium in-ground lights from Aspect LED. We are also going to be using this in conjunction with a 24 volt DC power supply. Other materials needed will be lever lock nuts, dielectric grease, a waterproof junction box, and several bags of large pea gravel, which we all purchased locally. Tools that we used are a wire stripper, a trench shovel, and measuring tape. Now finally, on to installation. For this part, we advise mocking up your layout first. This means wiring up the lights 
and laying them out at the locations where you will be burying them to test the lighting effect. So turn on the lights, see how it looks, see if it's casting the sort of effect you want, make sure that everything's wired properly, and then we can move on next to burying them. When you're happy with your final project and your layout, call ahead 24 hours in advance to your state's one call system. We're using the number 811, they can send someone out to your property to mark off the zones and the lines that are not safe to dig upon. After it's safe to dig, excavate the holes for the lights, as well as the channel where the wire will be run back to the power supply. At this point, we recommend digging the holes in such a way that it's roughly two times the width and two times the depth of the in-ground lights themselves, because this will provide the space that you need to pour in the pea gravel. And the pea gravel is essential in giving you the drainage you need for those lights to keep them safe. These lights come with a separated sleeve that needs to be attached first. Then in the hole, place a layer of pea gravel at the bottom where you can lower the light onto. Place the wires from the lights into the channel that you've dug and route them back to the power supply enclosure. It's best to test everything again one last time before burying the wires. We left the power supply box loose to be removed later if needed, but check your local codes to see if your power supply box needs to be mounted. We recommend using dielectric grease in the connections to keep moisture out. Because we went with a star topology layout, we're requiring a larger connector, and all of the black leads are connected together at the power supply, and all of the red wires are connected together as well. This whole setup of the angled placement of the light combined with the surrounding pea gravel is designed to provide proper drainage to the light as this is rated at IP65 to be water resistant but not meant to be submersed in water. If for some reason you're still having some issues with your lights, they're not functioning properly or turning on, we recommend checking your power supply to make sure that all your connections from each individual light is wired correctly and that your power supply is itself plugged in and receiving power. So we've got our homeowners out here now that it is all installed. So what do you think about it? We absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Everything, the whole process was just super easy. Um, the installation went well and the final outlook is just amazing. More than we ever dreamed of. Absolutely. Thanks Aspect LED. <laughs>